Hello and welcome along to the next in the series of videos where we are looking at setting up Chocolatey uh, in an organizational context. So, so far in the videos we have looked at uh, downloading and internalizing uh, Chocolatey and some of the packages that we want to install, uh, getting them into an internal Nexus repository and then setting up Nexus in such a way that we can also uh, do the initial installation of Chocolatey onto client machines from that repository as well. Now, with all of that up and running, uh, we can now start to look at the next stages of our automation. So what that means is rather than uh, someone having to manually keep a list of or keep a check on uh, if an internally internalized package is out of date based on what's on, available on chocolate.org, uh, we can set up some automation around that. And that's what we're going to start to look into today. Uh, so let's jump in. Uh, the organizational uh, documentation on chocolate.org, uh, we've essentially been through all of this stuff. So we have done all of these steps. So we're pretty much finished with this guide uh, as it stands. So we are, uh, this part of the work is completed. What we're going to start looking at is another uh, part of the documentation which walks us through how to use package internalizer in an automated way. And what this is going to step us through is uh, how we can configure a Jenkins server, uh, which is a, a CI CD pipeline tool, uh, to perform the automation for us. So before we can do that, obviously, we need to uh, get the Jenkins package. So it's available as a chocolate package. We need to uh, download and internalize that and we need to set up our Jenkins server. So over here, this is our Jenkins server. So this is another brand new server that I've just added into the uh, collection of servers that I now have. So what I need to do now is I need to get uh, chocolatey installed on this machine. So this is, a, like I said, this is a brand new machine. Uh, it doesn't have uh, chocolate installed. So I'm going to start the process of uh, getting that uh, up and running. So like I said, this is a brand new machine. So none of my normal setup is uh, done yet. So this is PowerShell. Let's make this font a little bit bigger so everybody can see it. So we're going to use the exact same process that we did on the previous video, which is to run that client setup script that we ran before. So I'm just going to grab a, uh, a bit of PowerShell that is close to what we're trying to achieve, but it's not going to work. So I'm going to stop that execution and I'm going to type in what will work. So it's going to be our client setup script that we created in the previous video. And that's going to be available on our Nexus repository, which is on 8081. And that is on the raw repository. If I can type that raw repository client dot setup client setup.ps1. So what that should do is that should run off and do the installation so to make so that we can make use of chocolatey on this machine. So let's just make sure that that gets started. And then I'm going to go back to my workstation machine, which is where I'm, which is where I do uh, all of the main work in terms of this setup. So let's just make sure that that's off and running. So that's off and running. Uh, let's pull that down there. So what we need to do is we need to grab this Jenkins package. So there's a, uh, there is a Jenkins package on chocolatey that we can make use of. So we want to uh, download and internalize this package and get that onto our Nexus repository so that we can consume it. So we've done that in the past by uh, running a uh, script and where have I used that? Where have I, oh, that was on the actual uh, documentation. So let's go back to that. Um, let's go back to that uh, download command so we can just borrow what we've used before. So in here, there'll be a chocolate download command. If I can find an example of one. So here we go. So let's just borrow this rather than having to type it out. So let's copy this and but into my uh, PowerShell window. And then into here, uh, it hasn't obviously copied all of that command. That's a little bit annoying. So let's pull that again. Oh, this is going to be difficult. It's going to make my life difficult. Let's just do this. 
try this again. Copy, paste. Oh, really? So all I want to do is I'm so all of these packages we've already uh, internalized. We don't have to internalize those ones. So I'm really struggling to get this to work the way I want it to. Let me try that again. Um, apologies about this. All I want to do is I want to take all of that out and I just want to internalize the one package that I believe is called Jenkins. So it's called Jenkins, yes. So I'm going to download Jenkins. The output directory is going to be into that uh, Choco Setup Packages folder, and I'm going to go ahead and download and internalize that. It would have been quicker probably just to type that out rather than uh, all of that that we had there. So what this is going to do, this is going to download and internalize the Jenkins package into this uh, C Choco Setup uh, Packages folder. And then what we can do is then we can publish that, we can push that package onto our internal Nexus repository. And then on the machine that's currently being set up and installed with uh, Chocolatey, on that machine, we can then uh, run Choco install Jenkins. Now, obviously on that machine, that Jenkins machine, uh, we could have just... Um, run Choco install directly from the community repository. But again, we are aiming to remove the dependency on the community repository by downloading and internalizing all of those packages. So now if we look in here, we have got a Jenkins uh, 2.2.2.4 uh, version. So I should now be able to push that onto my Nexus repository. So let's just confirm where we are. So this is, let's just look at Choco source list. Let's make this. Uh, window a little bit smaller. So where we're going to push to is going to be this URL. So we'll grab that. So we're going to do a choco push of uh, C, choco setup, packages, and then Jenkins. And then we're going to push that to our source, which is that one. Now, in a previous video, we set up the API key for Nexus to allow us to push those packages uh, without having to specify an API key. Now, this is the same error that we got previously. Uh, this is Chocolatey trying to protect us from ourselves. Uh, so it's saying here, uh, use the dash dash force if you understand the implications of pushing to a repository that doesn't have an SSL certificate. So in the current setup, we completely understand that. And then in a future video, we may look into setting up Nexus with an SSL cert so that everything is secure. But just now, it's an internal repository, we know what we're doing, so we're happy to allow that to go without an SSL cert. <clears throat> and now, then, once that is pushed into the uh, test repository, I'm going to also push it into the production repository. So I'm just gonna push up here, and I'm gonna change the test here to prod, and then we, should be able to install that package on our Jenkins server if it's then been set up with Chocolatey. So let's let this finish out and we will then jump over to uh, the Jenkins machine and get it installed. So let's just wait for that to finish. Shouldn't take too much longer, hopefully, based on how long it took. There we go. Okay, so over here, I'm gonna pull back in this server. This is my Jenkins machine and it has just finished its uh, client setup of Chocolatey. So I should now have Chocolatey available on this machine, ready to perform uh, installations. And if I do a Choco list of the source that is called prod nexus, so our client setup script will have configured the prod nexus repository as the, the one that Jenkins has access to, um, or, or more specifically, the one that each client machine has access to. So if I do a Choco source, a Choco list source of prod nexus, we should see that the Jenkins package that we've just put up there is then available. Now, there it is there. So now if I do a Choco uh, install of Jenkins, it should then, and I'll do a dash Y here just to confirm the installation, 
it will then pull that package from our internal repository. It's not reaching out to the internet. Uh, all of the installer uh, is in that inside that package and it will go ahead and it will install Jenkins on this machine. And then what we need to figure out is how we need to configure Jenkins to set up the automation of the uh, package internalizer. Now that will likely be done as part of the uh, next video. This video is really just about um, installing and making sure that things are working, okay? So let's just wait and see that this gets installed correctly, which it's now running. And let's see what happens. I forget the default port that Jenkins runs on, but we will um, check that out once the installation is complete. And there we go, getting to the end of it here. Okay, and if we look at, let's look to make sure that, I'm fairly sure that Jenkins installs as a service. So let's open the services snap in and see if that is running. I'm curious as to what's going on on this machine. So one of the slight side effects of this, I've mentioned it in our previous video, but I am running quite a few machines at once here, and I'm hoping that it, they're all going to be able to run at once for the kind of the the grand finale where everything's uh, checking into my uh, chocolate central management machine. So we'll have to we'll have to gauge that one as it's going. But Jenkins is running, so let's just see if we get a little hint on here as to what port it's running on by default. Let's maybe just have a look at the files to see what the installation does, if it gives any hints as to, no. So let's, let's see what we can find then. Jenkins, no. Okay, so let's have a little, let's I'll leave this here. I'm just going to search over on this one and look for Jenkins default port. 8080 it says. So let's try that. Let's see if we can, let's see if it's on there. HTTP uh, localhost 8080 and see if we've got a running service here. Oh, that looks promising. Okay. So unlike Jen, oh, so this is obviously the, uh, the, the wizard, the, the setup wizard for Jenkins. Uh, so we'll need to walk through this. Uh, to ensure Jenkins is securely set up by the administrator, a password has been written to the log file uh, on the server. So we need to browse to see program files, Jenkins, secrets, and then initial admin password. Let's go ahead and just open this with notepad. That's going to be my initial password. So I'm going to put that into there and I'm going to hit continue. Okay, so far so good. Um, plugins extend Jenkins with additional features to support different tools. Install suggested plugins and select what we're going to do here. Let's go ahead and just install selected plugins. So I'm going to, um, I'm going to let it set up its default and then in terms of how we are going to be using Jenkins so Jenkins is a full CI CD pipeline um, it would allow us to do build orchestration for MS build Java lots of different things um, we're only going to be using a very small subset of uh, the Jenkins capability and that's literally going to be uh, a, a few jobs that um, schedule and run uh, some PowerShell scripts that we put into play. So it's not, we're not going to be utilizing the full capabilities of Jenkins, but Jenkins is very good at what it does. And like I say, if you've already got a, a CI CD plat platform uh, within your organization, then uh, you can set by all means 
uh, add in the scripts that we're show I'm going to be showing you here into that existing uh, infrastructure you might have. We're just I'm just using this uh, as a, an example of what can be done. Okay, and certainly if you were to be going further with uh, chocolate ecosystem, <coughs> ecosystem, and by that I mean uh, creating your own packages, uh, storing them within source control, you may have uh, a part of the build pipeline might be the creation and uh, publishing of those packages. So uh, something like Jenkins CI/CD pipeline uh, comes into play there. Okay, so. I'm not necessarily going to sit and wait on this video for this to completely install, uh, but from recollection, it's been a while since I set up Jenkins. Uh, this is literally the last stage before uh, Jenkins starts up. So I'll most likely finish this uh, video just now, and we'll come back in the next video, which is to look at the configuration of Jenkins to do the three, three, two or three jobs uh, to automate the package internalizer process. So hopefully you can join me in that video. Uh, but that's it from this one. Uh, what I will say again is if there are any questions, feel free to uh, drop a comment in the uh, field below, or you can hit me up on Twitter as well, and I can answer any questions you might have there. Uh, but for now, uh, we'll say goodbye. Thank you very much.